should be divided into multiple separate enclosures, each housing only one snake and allowed to mate only during the breeding season. Snake enclosures should be built from bricks and have sturdy wooden or iron mesh. Opening the enclosure should only be done when necessary for feeding, ensuring safety for caretakers and preventing snake escape and aggression. Depending on the snake species, caretakers will provide suitable food Venomous snakes are typically fed frogs and chicken meat, while other types of snakes may be fed fresh meat. Most importantly, caution must be exercised when handling venomous snake enclosures to avoid potentially dangerous exposure. Do you know why people in Indonesia take such careful care of snakes? Although they are dangerous reptiles, their parts hold significant value. Snake venom is considered liquid gold because it possesses anticoagulant and antiplatelet properties, preventing blood clotting and reducing cancer risk. Its effects can be used to produce antivenom, a special medicine to treat snake bites, as well as to isolate and refine pain relievers and analgesics in modern medicine. Snake venom plays a crucial role in formulating various medications. If you have ever been treated with snake venom, please comment with number one. The snake meat market in Disa Candy Asia was a place that preserves the unique cultural heritage of the local people, manifested through the skillful and delicate processing of every part of the snake. Besides being a delicious dish, snake meat also provides abundant vitamins, protein and essential minerals that contribute to nourishing the body and enhancing health. Indonesia consumes over 10,000 tons of live snakes annually. Processing snake meat is a complex process that requires precision and technique. Different parts of the snake are separated, and the highest quality meat portions are selected. The meat can then be cut into small pieces or left in longer strips depending on the culinary style. The processing procedure must adhere to strict food hygiene standards to ensure consumer safety. The king cobra is the most expensive snake, with a selling price of 13 USD per pound of meat. Why do people separate snake skins when processing snake meat? Snake skin is one of the most valuable products from the snake farming industry in Indonesia, with high demand from the fashion industry. Their uniqueness and luxury create high economic value, making it a significant source of income for farmers and businesses. Snakeskin products are highly valued for their aesthetics and quality, often used to design luxury fashion items such as handbags, wallets and many others. The price of handbags made from snakeskin by Bodega Veneta is usually quite high, often in the range of thousands of US dollars. You can imagine the price of these snakeskins when they reach Western fashion houses, which can increase to $4,000 per piece. The allure of high profit margins from selling snakeskins has driven many localities in Indonesia to participate in this industry, creating significant income opportunities and employment for the people.
The snake farming industry plays a crucial role in providing jobs for people, with over 175,000 workers involved in snake farming and care. When watching the video, do you feel worried about people as safety? Leave comment number one if you see dangerous snakes. Comment zero if snakes bring economic value to Indonesian people. Thank you for watching the entire video. Please like and subscribe to the channel to wait for the next videos. Eel farming is not a new agricultural industry in Japan. It has a long history and is closely linked to the culture and cuisine of this country. Eel has become an important part of the snack tradition, especially in the summer. We often enjoy partner parties and traditional festivals. There are many eel farming models all over Japan. This is an outdoor eel farming model. They live in ponds and are divided into eel ages. The owner is feeding them. Almost all eel farms in Japan use homemade bran. This type of bran includes many ingredients, such as shrimp, fish, bran, and vermicelli. They are mixed together before being fed. Normally, Eels here will be harvested when they are 10 months old. At around 4 a.m., this is the right time to harvest eels. Farmers will use seine nets to harvest eels. The eels will be loaded into the vehicle's basket and transported to the store's farms. Here they will be selected and divided into different areas according to their size. Larger eels will be sent for processing. So what is it like to raise eels on closed farms? They breed eels right at this farm. These are baby eels in the process of developing. If you let them swim in the water, you can only recognize them by looking at their eyes and the black border running along their body. The water temperature must be maintained consistently between 23 and 28 degrees Celsius to ensure proper health and growth. These are eel farming areas. Water stirring systems help the eel's living environment to be more similar to that in nature, making it easier for them to adapt, grow, and develop. A Japanese farmer is mixing food for eels, they add bran powder and some other nutritious foods and mix it up. After mixing well, they will cut and divide into containers and then take them to each feeding area. They put the powder directly into the iron cages in the water 
so that the powder does not spread too much into the water area. When the weight and size of the eels meet standards, they will be harvested and sent to processing factories. The eels will be stored in large water bags with air pumps and put on trucks to be transported to the processing plant. Right now, we will step into the processing factory to see how we can process thousands of eels within an hour. Your questions will be answered right here in this factory. After the eels are brought to the processing factory, they will be poured into stone bathing tanks. This is very necessary because the eel's body secretes a large amount of mucus. In the tank, a rotating system like a washing drum is installed to clean up this amount of mucus. After about 25 minutes, the eels will be dumped out according to the conveyor system. The workers here will divide them into small containers and then pour crushed ice over them to maintain their freshness. The special thing here is that the stone will help the eel body have friction. Making the next eel processing step easier. Let's see if you prepare it this way. Each eel will be pinned with a nail on the cutting board. They will then be separated from the spine, and the organs and spine will be removed. Doing this will help keep the eel meat from falling apart and maintain its deliciousness. After processing, the eel will be washed and drained. These scales will be responsible for determining the weight of each eel and dividing it into corresponding boxes. Each box will be filled with crushed ice and moved to the next step. To have your products, you will have to go through many stages. Now the eels will be washed again and then placed on the conveyor system of this machine. They will be placed next to each other so that more can be obtained after one processing. The grilling system inside the machine will help tighten the surface of the eel. Once they come out of the grill, they are turned over to the back side. The eel pieces will be inspected for any burned parts, and then these parts will be removed. After grilling the other side, they continue to run along the conveyor belt through the sweet sauce system. The sauce will evenly cover both sides of the eel. This is a special sweet sauce for this type of grilled eel. They are like a layer of honey that covers the entire surface of the eel. The first two times of coating with sauce, the eel pieces were still not soaked in, and the color was beautiful. After four times, the eel pieces begin to taste rich and the color of the sauce thickens on the eel meat. They look really attractive, don't they? Running straight on the conveyor belt, the eel meat pieces will be frozen.
Then each piece of frozen eel will be checked for weight and then packed into boxes. Thank you so much guys for watching this video. So since we don't really have any clue of what kind of difficulties that you could be facing in your farms, please don't forget to share all the problems you're facing and uh, obstacles you're going through as this will tremendously help us with our upcoming videos.